This is Travis Wayne Goodsell, and this is uh, the introduction for the new video series that I will be working on in uh, April 1997. Uh, my first uh, wife uh, abandoned the marriage, took our kids away from me. She did not get permission from the law. She got permission from the church. She got permission from my family. She didn't get permission from me. The laws of the land does not consider that a crime. And I was extorted to pay the ransom money with no guarantee that I'd ever see my kids again, and I haven't. And uh, on uh, February 1st, 2019, the state of Utah got involved in taking away my second wife. And so the gloves are off, the church is going down, and this video series will present to you what a true LDS Mormon church president, prophet, seer, revelator, and the neglected translator would do. But as you know, none of them have. So the abuse is going to stop, Mormons. If you guys won't change your heart, change your ways, then you're going to be exposed. And no YouTube Mormon employee is going to stop it. No abusive comments from Mormons is going to stop it. No thumbs down is going to stop it. You guys have seen my videos. You know I can destroy the church. Because it's not of God. And you remember the Book of Mormon. Or actually, it's the Doctrine and Covenants. Sorry. Contend against no church, but the church of the devil. Church is going down. It's on. Okay, I uh, didn't want to stop the, the song uh, uh, from, uh, the, well, that was inspired by the, well, in the movie uh, Groundhog Day, uh, but I uh, still keep coming up with new ideas for videos. I will destroy the church, and I will keep posting videos over and over and over and over until Mormons finally leave and, uh, and so uh, the second video was doing better than I started out with so maybe I didn't need to rename it after all uh, however <laughs> I think the title Groundhog <laughs> <laughs> it's a better prophet than LDS prophets is a, a good title. <laughs> so, don't comment angry, Mormons. <laughs> I am not the focus of your anger. I am only pointing out the truth. You are angry with the church leaders. That is where your anger needs to be focused. Okay, so uh, this one is going to be titled, LDS Church President Nelson Refuses to Translate Discovered Brass Plates. That's right, the brass plates have been discovered, Mormons. Did you know that? You know, Denver Snuffer says the sealed portion was found and he translated it. And then later said, no, nah, I just wrote it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he... he got a few thousand Mormons to leave. Good for him on that part, I guess. 
but he doesn't have any organized structure for a church. He has no intention. <sighs> okay, so, yeah, the brass plates have been discovered, Mormons. I've already posted the videos of what the brass plates contain. <sighs> and so, yeah, the brass plates come from the Book of Mormon, Mormons. You know this. And you guys are all focused on the sealed portion. Oh, we're waiting for the sealed portion, the sealed portion. And you forget the brass plates. You forget Ezekiel, the scripture mastery. Take thee one stick for Joseph, and another stick for Joseph, Joseph Judah, and combine them. Where's that? Oh, it's the quad. No! Only Elder Nelson, before he was president. And this was back in the 80s where I finally found somebody who made the claim that the Book of Mormon is the stick of Joseph. He's the only one I can find. Now, granted, the search engine on LDS.org sucks, but I could only find him. And, uh, yeah, he thinks the Book of Mormon is. No! No! Nelson, Mr. So-called Prophet, Seer, Revelator, Translator, no! And why not, Mormons? Do you understand what the brass plates is? It's supposed to go to all the world. And the Ezekiel, what is it? It's a stick of Joseph and a stick of Judah. Judah, already in the Bible. But guess what the brass plates is? The brass plates are handed down to the sons of Joseph. It's the stick of Joseph. But wait! When Lehi looks at the plates of brass, he discovers it's got the records of the Jewish prophets and the Jewish kings. <laughs> that it's a record of the Jews also. <laughs> And so, yes, ex-Mormons and non-Mormons know the Book of Mormon is not a real history. And that has been plagiarized. And I've discovered that there are more plagiarisms than what linguistic scholars have been able to identify. And computer technicians who have a program where they can plug in other books around the time period and compare it with the Book of Mormon to search to see if other books are in the Book of Mormon and uh, but uh, yeah the brass plates is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 it's the combination <laughs> and Lehi said the brass plates the fulfillment of Ezekiel will go to all the world will never be destroyed. Where is it? It's gone. <gasps> no, it's not gone. I told you I've done the videos showing you the reconstructed brass plates and translated other portions to include in with the, the stick of Judah. And so, yeah, I'm not going to go over that here in this video. This is just to point out to you guys that where's the church presidents? They're supposed to do it, aren't they? They're translators, aren't they? The brass plates have been found. Where are they? Why aren't they being translated by the church presidents? They're not doing it, are they? because they don't have authority from God, which means they're not given revelation. They don't know the answer. And if you look at the Gospel Topic Essays, under Historicity and Translation of the Book of Abraham, they say Joseph Smith didn't even translate it correctly. The Book of Abraham, the Egyptian papyri, which he says the Book of Joseph was a part of. 
stick of Joseph was discovered. I've got it. I can show you. <laughs> Here it is. The stick of Joseph. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> I've translated it. <laughs> I've done the videos showing you. They're not as popular for some reason. I guess I didn't word them right. Or maybe nobody's interested in looking up in the brass plates or the translation. <sighs> and so, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I doubt I'm going to put links to it. But uh, they're there. Go to my videos section in my channel. You can find them. <sighs> And so, uh, yeah, Mormons, you're waiting for your presidents to come out and announce, hey, we've discovered the brass plates. We've discovered the stick of Joseph. And we're going to translate it. Where are they? They haven't done it. It's not added. It's available. I just showed you. It's from the Egyptian papyra. It's Egyptian documents. All their temple carvings, their tomb carvings. Those are the stick of Joseph. That's it. All we have to do is translate it. And Egyptologists have translated the text, but that's where I come in. I figured out, oh, hey, wait a minute. None of the glyph signs are in Gardner's sign list. What's going on? So I searched and figured out, why isn't it? And lo and behold, I discovered, hey, these glyphs also need to be translated, not just the text. And guess what? I then went to the Book of Abraham to confirm that it could be translated. The facsimiles, not the text, the facsimiles. And guess what? I found out Joseph Smith is legitimate. He doesn't make a full translation though. And he makes a lot of errors. But he's got the right idea. But the church has officially stated Joseph Smith is wrong. That's the official church position. Joseph Smith is not a translator. And as a result, every conference, when you sustain the leaders of the church as prophets, seers, and seers, according to the Book of Mormon, is people who are able to translate ancient records that nobody else can translate. Ooh, mysterious. Revelators. And they drop off translators. They no longer say translators anymore. We're not sustaining them as translators. Why? Because the gospel topic essays say Joseph Smith was wrong in translating. <laughs> and Mark Hoffman humiliated the church, as well as Egyptologists have humiliated the church. But the Egyptologists only say that, you know, we can't find Abraham in the text. But he's there in the facsimiles. They just call him by his Egyptian name. <laughs> and I go over this in my videos. It's very clear. And so it just boggles my mind that Mormons still stay in the church, that you refuse to listen to me. I'm the one warning you. I am the one telling you the truth. The church is lying to you. They're deceiving you. They're covering things up. That's automatic. Nope, gone. I'm out of here. Section 121, guys. 
prophets lose their authority when they began to cover up church history. Gone. Of course, Brigham Young never had it anyway. And I've done that video. Videos and books and... Yeah, my book, Mormon Conundrum. So I don't expect anybody to go rushing to buy it, even though it's on Kindle for you. Uh, but, uh, come on, guys. I have made an actual translation. I have the original ancient documents for you to examine. I do it in the video. The, the one video that, that I have the pictures for each stage. <laughs> you can verify it for yourself. You know, Denver Snuffer, where's the sealed portion, Denver? Oh, you don't have it? Uh-huh. You just wrote it. You didn't actually get the, the plates to trend. Uh-huh. And James Strang. You know, at least he forged plates <laughs> to claim a translation <laughs> so you know he was able to trick a few of high profile mormons to follow him but i have found the actual documents the ancient documents consisting of the brass plates that contain the book of Joseph. We already have it, remember? We've had it a long time. But there's more to the book of Joseph than just what Joseph got. And I've made the translation for you guys in a video. On my website, I uh, dedicated a whole page to uh, the Egyptian temple endowment. As it was intended you know no Freemasonic marks on your garments no Freemasonic name or tokens and signs but uh, yeah that's long gone so if you're gonna go rushing to it to find it I've it's gone I shouldn't have done that I should have archived it but oh well uh, but uh, yeah I, I guys don't you get it A church history professor from BYU, uh, I can't remember her name, I'm sure she probably still works there in the church history department. Um, it's not coming to me, it's been a decade, it's been a decade since I've known her, but uh, uh, she was the one who said that uh, I can't translate because you know, I'm not a president of the church. But she did try to tell me, oh, God chooses the president of the church, so you can still be president. Yeah, but I've been divorced. I'm not married now. No, it doesn't matter. God chooses. Yeah, but I, and I'm coming up with all these excuses why no, it can't be me. You know, I'm not even in a leadership position. Blah, 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 blah. No, she insisted. She didn't understand. As a church history professor at BYU, she did not understand that the technical policy, doctrine, whatever you want to call it for the church, is that yes, God should choose. She didn't understand the scripture in section 107, verse 22. That the succeeding president of the church upon the removal or death of a president of the church is to be had by a full vote of the Melchizedek priesthood. The Melchizedek priesthood chooses the next president of the church. And Mormons, you don't get that, do you? You don't know it. I've never heard anybody talk about that. You know, Brigham Young went a few verses later saying, oh, the corner of the 12, traveling 12, 
is equal in authority to the first presidency. Doesn't matter. That's not what he's talking about. Verse 22 is what he's talking about. If there is no successor to the presidency of the church, because it was intended for his son, you know, the whole salamander letter scandal. <laughs> Mark Hoffman was using that to create a forged document of a salamander story account. Prophecy by a salamander at the hearth of this fireplace. <laughs> and the church paid him off to keep it a secret until finally he started blowing up bishops who were exposing him or going to expose him. And, and uh, I guess a car bomb went off on him and that's how he got caught. <laughs> what a dummy. And so yeah, he's in, I guess, the Salt Lake County or prison, I guess. Or is it in a federal prison somewhere else? I don't know. I can probably Google it, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah, guys, the prophets have had the brass plates. They've had the stick of Joseph this whole time. And they've done nothing. And then I come along. I want to know how Joseph Smith did it. How did he do it? And so I studied. I had the opportunity to take classes on Biblical Hebrew. I took classes on Egyptian and Egyptology. I found a book on Chinese characters, because that's what you do when you decipher languages. I have made the discoveries as a result. And as a result, I can translate ancient records. You know, the whole faith without fruit is dead. Notice I said fruit instead of works. Because I hope the imagery will ring true to you. Because most of you think, oh, once I have faith, I need to act on my faith. You need to fulfill your faith, not just act. You can't just talk the talk. That's faith. You can't walk the walk only, because that's action. You need to be the being. You gotta talk the talk, then walk the walk, then become the being. That's the process. I did it. It's right there in Alma 32. But, you know, I didn't catch on fully, even though uh, Creel Coford, my mission president, uh, gave us that lesson. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was by taking a philosophy of science, getting a bachelor's in philosophy of science as a dual with biblical studies. And, uh, and, and so I learned how to develop theories, scientific theories, and for any field, especially religion. Because religion thinks that they can outsmart science. And you can't. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> it, just, it just boggles my mind how religions are deceived by their leaders. And even in the church. You know, you have Oaks, who gets up in conference and says, no, scientific truth isn't true. <laughs> just read, ponder, and pray. <laughs> what a dummy. The guy's a lawyer. He's a judge. And they're going to have to go back on all of his cases that he decided and have to overturn and release all the prisoners he's put away. Because he, he's now in question. 
And that's the thing that we have in this in America. We have a problem now. All prisoners have to be released because all the judges have been wrong in violating the Constitution. The supreme law of the land, you know. In the Book of Mormon, they call it the law of Mosiah. So, yeah. So, yeah, the presidents of the church have the brass plates. They have the stick of Joseph. And they're not doing anything. They don't even claim to be translators. And so, I am declaring, I have done it. <laughs> you know, Denver Snuffer was able to fool uh, upwards of around 3,000 members. They're not really sure because he doesn't have an official organization. Uh, but, uh, you know, he doesn't have the original document, the plates. He just has his own transcript. And you can go to his website and download it for yourself. <laughs> it's a fun read. It says that the leaders of the church in the last days would be corrupt. <laughs> Way to go, Denver. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, you kind of got just gone to Jeremiah chapter 23 to know that the Latter-day Prophets were going to be corrupt. He says it. Jesus says it. The last days, there will be false Christ and false prophets. Who do you think has prophets in their church? Christians don't. Catholics don't. <laughs> oh, well, prophet means other things. It's those, those homeless people with signs. <laughs> no! <laughs> so, yeah. I did it. I'm not a prophet. I did it. I did what the prophets were supposed to do. What you believed you were waiting for them to come out with. And they didn't do it. I did. I've got it. So how many of you are going to leave the church now? How many? Denver got 3,000. Strain, you know, I think he got a hundred or two hundred. I don't know how many. I'd, I'd have to go back and Google him on Wikipedia to, to see if they give a number of how many he was able to take in. But <laughs> Mormons, I've got the evidence. I've got the original documents. <laughs> I'm not like the other guys. <laughs> And so, I, I don't get it. Why aren't you leaving? Why aren't you leaving, Mormons? You shouldn't be going to church tomorrow. It's the church of the devil. Remember? There are safe two churches only. Even though there are lots of churches, it really comes down to they either follow Jesus or they don't. And only one, if any, can follow the true Jesus. Everybody else is not following the true Jesus. They're following a different God that they name Jesus. So all the Christians, there's over a thousand Christian churches. Each one has a different Jesus, but they won't admit it. <laughs> they want to be all part of the same Christian coalition. And it becomes a territory thing. Whatever Christian church has over a certain area that is their congregation and so if you dare build another christian church in the territory of another one and pull members away you are an enemy <laughs> and so you know come on guys this is a no-brainer situation no brainer no brainer. So, yeah, I'm gonna 
save this video and upload it. And while I'm uploading it, I'm going to go back to Rachman enough. And the Rhapsody, or no, not Rachman enough. The Paganini. Rhapsody in the theme of Paganini. <laughs> Rachman enough is another good one. But uh, we'll do Paganini. So, why aren't you leaving? <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, we don't like your tone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, the Pharisees didn't like Jesus' tone. <laughs> you hypocrites. You blind fools. You guides. Blind guides. <laughs> Unbelievable, Mormons. Because that's Matthew 23 if you want to look up Jesus going off, giving tone to the Pharisees and scribes. It's awesome. Jesus is my hero. <laughs> I'm pattering my life after Jesus, you blind fool. <laughs> you hypocrite. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, come on, guys. The church isn't true. You've been fooled. You've been deceived. You were warned that you were going to be deceived by anybody else who is not authorized. Brigham Young was not authorized. Therefore, nobody else is authorized. And thus, you've been deceived. It's that simple. I've got the brass plates. I've translated the brass plates. I've joined them together. I need to publish it. That's going to take some time. But I've done it. So. Unbelievable, Mormons. Unbelievable. All right. So I guess I'll be going to bed around 10. Ugh. So did you watch Groundhog Day today? <laughs> Groundhog, better prophet than the wealthiest prophets. <laughs> I told the church, I told you guys, I am destroying the church until the last one of you leaves. It is so easy to destroy the church. They shouldn't have messed with me, but they couldn't help themselves. You know, just like Laman. He couldn't let the Nephi and those who followed him go. He had to control them too. And so he kept hunting them down to kill them and subjugate them to him. That's what the church is doing. And I warned them, I warned you, that I was going to destroy the church. And I've done it. These three videos... First one, priestcraft. The church is practicing priestcraft. The second one, is there not prophets, seers, revelators, and translators? And then here, the brass plates, the stick of Joseph has been in their midst this whole time, and they haven't done it because they're not translators. I have done it. I know how to fix the economy. Even though we're in a corrupt economy, I know how to rescue the poor and the needy, to elevate them out of the po being poor and needy, even in the economy we're in. I've been warning you, as a true prophet would do, about the signs in the heavens, about the destructions. Remember? Polar vortex. Remember the video? I called upon God. If you were able to last to the end, most of you don't. And God missed it by a few states. I wanted Utah. And steady did the whole Northwest. 
northeast, sorry, north central, northeast, anyway, whatever. He missed Utah. But yeah, Utah's next. It's coming. And then the brass plates. The stick of Joseph. I've got it. I've got the plates. I've shown them to you. You don't need to go to Charles Anton <laughs> to see if he recognizes the names from his own published book of the Dictionary of Names. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I just get a laugh out of that. Because <laughs> Joseph Smith gives him some characters and Martin Harris clueless on how the whole process works. He thought, oh, he was looking into rocks in a hat. <laughs> and then goes to Martin and goes to Charles Anthon. <laughs> Not knowing... <laughs> If he had brought a translation with it, oh man, Charles Anthon would have been furious. <laughs> More furious than he actually was about the claims that, oh, you can't, there's no plates, you can't see plates. No, they're sealed. <laughs> well, I'm not going to translate something that's sealed. <sighs> but, guys, you know. Guys, guys, guys. So yeah, three strikes, Mormons. How many strikes are you going to keep going for? You only get three. <laughs> I've done them. <sighs> okay, but I've got more to go. I'm going to keep going. It's Groundhog Day. Every day is Groundhog Day. <laughs> Elder Vitae on our mission in New York, New York. Every day is a P-Day. <laughs> All right, uh, it's time for me to go to bed. The laughter's getting to my head now. Uh, leave the church. That's all I ask. It's that simple. Just don't go tomorrow. 